Hi, this is Matthew with F Class Community Channel, uh, bringing you an update on my uh, F Class Panda Action build for FTR, um, and this is based on a, a aluminum chassis stock from Extreme Gun Shooting Center. Uh, they've built a style of stock that is very similar uh, to the Dolpha Dolphin uh, stock, uh, aluminum chassis stock that they have. Um, there's a lot of similarities and there are some differences. Uh, one thing is uh, Dolphin, I don't believe, makes a, a aluminum chassis stock uh, for the uh, Stoll F Class Panda Action. Um, uh, d just to try to keep the video brief, um, I've had a little bit of opportunity to um, play around with the sock and assemble a little bit. A little bit more detail, uh, since details aren't readily available on their website. Uh, this stock is actually painted. Um, initially, uh, I had thought, well, it, it would probably be uh, uh, anodized. However, um, probably in order for them to save some cost, they ended up painting uh, over this aluminum um, uh, aluminum uh, stock. Um, the finish overall is is pretty even. However, um, paint on aluminum, uh, especially when you have uh, screws um, that contact the uh, uh, the paint itself, what you're going to run into is is chipping. And this is a little bit of a pet peeve of mine: is is you spend good money on a stock, um, you, you you're, you're expecting a, a little bit more uh, in terms of um, um, maybe maybe the quality and the finish. However, um, maybe due to some of the um, uh, time time frames or uh, availability of of, uh, of anodizing, um, this you know this aluminum stock isn't anodized. So down the road, uh, when you toss this um, uh, stock around a little bit more, uh, or it gets bumped up against things, you know things start to chip. And I'm not too sure if you can see here, but uh, there is a very slight chip on the cheek piece there. Um, and that wasn't f from anything in particular or me dropping it or anything. It was just a, a slight imperfection or a flake uh, of paint uh, that was raised uh, and it fell off itself. And, and this is typical of um, paint, uh, automotive paint probably, um, if there are impurities or, or things that, that are, are, are around that uh, uh, gets attached to stock, it, it gets embedded and, and it doesn't create a very good contact or, or bond. Um, this is just sm one small pet peeve of mine. Um, the other uh, thing that I noticed is uh, when, when trying to assemble, assemble my stock and, and, and put the, um, uh, my bipod on, well, my dolphin bipod does not work. Um, uh, the adapter uh, doesn't fit into the slot. I mean, the slot is built to a very tight tolerance, um, probably more for uh, some of the thinner uh, style um, uh, rail adapters. But this is a dolphin rail adapter. Uh, this is for from a dolphin tracker bipod. And I, I actually had a friend uh, measure one out for me, and his bipod adapter is, is pretty much the same. What what happens is is the width, uh, and, you, and you can tell it gets it's stuck there, the, 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 the width of, of the, the adapter um, compresses against the, the rail's edge. And as you can see there, there's a little bit of, of wear um, uh, and, and the paint has chipped off uh, on, on the stock because of that. Uh, I'll try to get it focused in here. But uh, uh, you know, things, uh, little things like that. Maybe the tolerance could have been loosened just a little bit more. Uh, however, you know, uh, there, there, you know, it could be argued that maybe this isn't your standard, standard and shit, and shit, Schultz, uh, uh, a rail adapter. Um, the the other thing is uh, uh, when assembling, uh, you're going to need a lot longer. <laughs> Uh, a, a longer Allen uh, uh, hex or uh, uh, wrench in order to uh, uh, get the uh, grip uh, mounted on. Uh, that's one of the things um, uh, that that is kind of holding me back. I just haven't had the time to 
to go out and, and grab a, a very long Allen Allen uh, key or, or, or a T, T uh, uh, Allen uh, uh, T wrench. So at any rate, uh, little things like that. Um, when you have lots of contact points, especially when you're going to be adjusting this this stock on and off, um, uh, these this area here, this is going to be bashed. Um, I mean, just just my thought is is when paint you press two painted surfaces to, together, uh, they tend to stick, and uh, 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 especially if they're not cured 100%, um, uh, what you're going to run into is is it's sticking together, and eventually, more and more you you adjust and try to put things back together, the more and more the paint will chip off and wear off. So uh, that that's a that's a, a another thing that uh, uh, kind of kind of hinders uh, the, um, uh, you know, a little bit of pet peeve of mine. Um, I'm going to break these videos into sections just so that uh, I'm, I'm using a different camera, so I'm going to break it down and, uh, uh, and, and, and uh, clip them all together for you. All right, um, here, here's the, the next section is the, uh, the butt, butt stock. Uh, it's fully adjustable butt stock, the length of pull. Uh, and uh, uh, the height of the recoil pad. Uh, the cheek piece is also 100% adjustable, so you can move this cheek piece forward and back and side to side uh, to adjust for um, uh, cast, I guess, or, or, or better align your, your cheek and cheek weld uh, to your stock. Um, maybe you can see here now, I had, I had removed the, uh, the, the screws uh, holding the butt uh, uh, piece buttstock piece together, and uh, and hopefully you can see here. But you can see the chipping that that's that's happening, uh, especially when the screws are tightened. So um, uh, uh, just just not to to exhaust a, a point, but uh, but uh, you know uh, the finish is is of a paint, uh, maybe a Cerakote or even. And anodizing would have been a better option. Uh, maybe it would have lasted a little bit longer or be a little bit more durable. Um, breaking it down part, uh, the other aspect that um, um, uh, that bothers me just a little bit is the mounting on the uh, recoil pad. Uh, it is a single point um, uh, screw and nut that mounts to uh, a slot, as you can see here, uh, to the back. I'm not too sure if this is typical of the Dolphin, uh, but uh, this is what I received uh, from Extreme Gun Shooting Center. Um, so far it's tightened up pretty good. It doesn't twist or anything, however, um, as you know, anything mounted with a single point sometimes will come loose. Um, my concern is that it starts coming loose during a course of fire. Um, I tried to tighten this uh, up, but until I do a, a full test and a full fire test, um, with uh, 80 or 100 rounds and see how this performs. Um, my concern is that this uh, recoil pad may rotate while I'm in the course of fire. Um, so that would affect my accuracy, that would probably affect my score uh, if that was the case. And, and I would hate to have to uh, remove and try to tighten this or try to make adjustments while I'm um, uh, in uh, a competition. Um, w one of the, the things is uh, it came with uh, a limb saver recoil pad. It's very cushy, um, and uh, I think that in terms of absorbing recoil, it would be a very good uh, a recoiling uh, a, a absorbing uh, uh, butt uh, plate. Um, one of the other things that I noticed is is the cheek piece. Uh, I have it tightened here right now, but uh, this is as low as you're going to get with this cheek piece. And I've loosened this 100% uh, right now and, and adjusted the, the screw all the way up. And you can't get it any lower than maybe, oh, that 3 quarters of an inch. The reason being is um, the, the pillars or the guide rods for the cheek piece doesn't go all the way through the stock. It, the rail that these Allen head screws use uh, to secure itself against the, the chassis uh, kind of acts as a barrier. 
so you can't lower it anymore. Uh, you lose a lot of range of motion, in my opinion, um, considering if this is the lowest you're going to go, be able to go, and that's low, you know, maxed out right there, that's bombed out right there. I mean, you're lo only looking at maybe, oh, I don't know, maybe an inch, maybe a little less of vertical travel um, that you're allowed. Um, I'm not too sure how that's going to affect my ability to uh, fit the stock to, to my uh, shooting position um, or how it will affect uh, um, my accuracy, but uh, it's one thing that I'm going to look out for and I'll give further review down the road. I can't really speak on it right now to say oh, it's a deal breaker or not. Um, maybe it, it lines up um, to perfect height once uh, the scope is on and, and it maybe it doesn't need to be that uh, um, any lower, but it would be nice if it was. Uh, I'm just saying. So, uh, on to the next. Okay, we have here the uh, bedding area or the ac action area of the aluminum chassis. Uh, what you have is a, a slot here for the recoil lug. Uh, you have a little hollowed out area. Uh, this area was taken out probably in order to save weight and your area uh, cut out for your trigger uh, and your holes for your three action screws that are on the F-Class Panda Action. Um, this area is all painted as well as you can see. Um, I don't know how this will affect uh, down uh, the mating of the action uh, to the stock or, uh, or the chassis. Uh, what you want is, is you want as much contact area, much, uh, as much surface area, as much contact area as you can to mate with the stock in order to, to ensure that the, uh, th there's um, n uh, no play or, or give, it, give the, the action enough rigidity uh, to perform its job. Um, uh, one of the things is, is uh, uh, with paint, um, sometimes there's a little bit of an even uh, surfaces where, where kind of uh, uh, where all the holes or where you know just along the edges, I can just feel a slight lip here where it pools. Um, it depends. I guess it really depends on how it's dried uh, and how the stock was painted. But uh, these areas here, um, and, and I can feel. I don't know if you, I can zoom in here and you can see, but. Uh, it raises, it raises, it, you have some high points. So um, that's the other kind of negative uh, maybe uh, with uh, paint uh, over maybe anodizing or um, uh, seracoding is, is that uh, it, it, it does produce maybe a, an, an even surface. And down the road, I don't know how this will affect uh, performance of the rifle. Um, I'm hoping that uh, it, it provides good contact. I don't want to have to shave out this area and, and bed it. I mean, that's, uh, you know, it, that's just a lot of work, um, especially in a aluminum chassis. Um, uh, in terms of tolerances, in terms of how this action fits and, and mates with the stock, um, it, it's, it slides in pretty tight. There's no, there's no lateral movement. Uh, however, I'm not too sure if you see this or, or even hear it, but there is a slight play back and forth. Now that will, uh, in some in 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 some cases, uh, affect accuracy, and that's why most people bed their action so it doesn't move around uh, or or causes any action uh, uh, accuracy issues. Um, uh, but once you tighten the bolts down, hopefully the recoil lug is seated uh, uh, up against the uh, recoil surface right here. Uh, that it makes good contact, and and I can't. There's no way of checking that. Um, however, um, what I, what I can tell you is uh, uh, on the back end here. Um, if I move this action forward, uh, uh, or, or I, l let me just push it all the way back, so so the the tang and the, and the bearing surface of the tang is is up against the the stock. Um, uh, I have a one and a half thou. Uh, uh, gauge here. I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can. But that that slides in there. Um, three thou. That slides in back beh behind the tang. 
Uh, I'm going to go up to five, and that slides in back there. I would just want to make sure that you know that I'm not pushing them up against the 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 tang there. Six, seven, and that's pretty tight. So so uh, it still fits in there. Uh, I have an eight. Eight doesn't fit. So eight doesn't fit, uh, eight thou uh, feeler gauge doesn't fit back there. So um, I just want to make sure I don't I don't want to create any kind of you know uh, inaccuracies in in my report here. So you know I have a seven. So yeah, you can just get the blade in there. So a seven thou clearance when the recoil lug is all the way all the way um, uh, the, or the tang is all the way to the rear. So you know, just ensure, you know, my measurements are accurate. Yeah, so that that does fit in back there just a little bit. It's a little tight. Yeah. So between six and seven, I would say. Um, moving the tang forward, uh, I think I, I measured out up to eleven, uh, and and I I believe a twelve doesn't fit. So uh, your with the with the tang pushed all the way back to to the rear of the stock is approximately six to seven thou clearance um, of space, so it's not making 100% contact with the rear of the stock. So my question becomes: Is is the recoil lug um, set back or making contact with the uh, recoil bearing surface of the aluminum chassis? Um, uh, it, Definitely, it's something to play with. Um, uh, something you know, a little bit of thought will have to go into it. If I want, I, I want to bed this uh, action into the stock in order to to ensure that it doesn't shift um, during a, a heavy fire. Um, and in some cases, uh, from reports from some, uh, you know, from a few other reports or I've seen online, or maybe from from uh, a, a few other F-class shooters who run the Dolphin stock. Uh, they had that kind of play, and that caused, they believe, uh, some issues with some flyers and, and things like that. So, okay, um, I what I've done is now I've screwed the action in and then moved the action back to the recoil bearing surface. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure the the tolerances between the uh, front of the action, uh, the the recoil lug, on the F class Panda action against the the bearing surface. I mean, I'm pretty sure that that it's bearing against uh, the the recoil surface because I've moved it all the way back. It doesn't move back any further. So uh, what I have here is uh, uh, some feeler gauges, and uh, I'm going to poke in, poke just in front of the recoil uh, lug. Just to see what kind of tolerances we have uh, between uh, uh, for the uh, recoil lug area. So um, I have a, a three thou uh, a fielder gauge that that fits in pretty good. Uh, four that fits in behind there as well, and a five. And the five does not go in. Uh, at any point along here, so uh, it's somewhere it's somewhere in between uh, a four and a five uh, thou uh, clearance. So uh, there there is what we call a I mean a little bit of play, a little bit of play in the action there uh, uh, against the uh, recoil recoil bearing surface. Um, just 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 to conclude. Uh, Overall, the stock is is it, it's the nice stock. I, I don't want to knock knock at it. However, there are a few details with the stock that uh, bugs me a little, and I would call pet peeves. Um, uh, definitely, it will have it will be a long term test. Uh, we're going to take a look at how this stock performs, and that that's the key is how well it performs uh, and. And if there are anything that happens within the course of fire that would cause 
the grade uh, at this point to either go up or or go down. Um, uh, it's 950 bucks plus taxes uh, plus shipping, um, and uh, for what you get, it's ready to go. It's pretty much ready to go. You don't have to make any changes. Um, and uh, I just, I guess, I should add a, a little note that the uh, entrance uh, uh, rail does fit a Harris bipod Anschutz adapter. So it, so it definitely fits the thinner blade, as you can see, compared to uh, the, the the Dolphin, um, which tends to be a little bit more beefier and a little bit more thicker, I guess, uh, maybe a little bit more thicker in width. Uh, hopefully you can see it see it there. I can just try to zoom in there for you. But at any rate, the Harris bipod adapter does work. So this has to be adjusted, which kind of bugs me because it, it works for my other stock, uh, which has uh, uh, my other rifle, which has the, the uses the same bipod. Um, at any rate, that's my report on the stock. I mean, overall, I mean, I give this stock for myself is um, probably a six and a half out of ten. Um, it, it gets a passing grade. Um, uh, overall quality, I mean, everything fits. However, the, it, you know, things are, are are fairly tight, and which makes it good. However, um, uh, you know, a few of the pet peeves that I mentioned, um, I don't know, maybe that will eat at me a little bit if I think about it too much. Um, uh, the paint, the uh, the way my bipod did not, uh, uh, adapter did not work immediately. I'm going to have to make adjustment to my bipod adapter. Uh, like I said, uh, there were issues with tolerances there and did not fit. Um, the single point uh, attachment uh, of the butt pad there, and uh, just the way the screws make contact with paint and way, way it chips, and the adjustability, uh, um, possibly the adjustability issues uh, with, uh, in terms of the height of the cheek piece. At any rate, thank you so much. Um, I hope you find this informative. If you have any questions, uh, please post it, post it in the comment section. Please like the video, uh, and please subscribe if you'd like to see more from the F-Class Community Channel. So, uh, all I have to say is, uh, uh, overall, I like the stock. Uh, it's going to be adjustment period. Uh, uh, what I'm, I, I need to do is uh, play with it a little bit more and, and use it in, in uh, a competition uh, situation. So, keep an eye on the flags and tight groups.